Hello everyone and welcome to the series of Learn RxJS. In this video, we are going to look at what problem does RxJS solves for us. We are going to look at what problem do we face with our traditional code. The problem that we face with our traditional code is data, data, data. There is lots and lots of data coming into our web application or I shall say that web applications of our current time is consuming a lot of data as compared to what it used to consume five or eight years ago. Also, the web applications are built as a collection of small, small components, independent components, which can be integrated to form a bigger web application. And each component needs to be updated about the latest data as soon as the data is available. We cannot afford to recall the services inside each and every component and waste the valuable resources or internet bandwidth of the user. This is where observables come into picture. Let me give you an example of how observables would be useful. Let's say we have a page, a page of let's say search flight and our search flight page has lots and lots of different components like header uh, where we have where we can enter the from and to city and then we have a search button, we have a search result section, we have a section which displays the number of flight, we have a section which has filters. So let's say we are searching flight from Mumbai to Bangalore and then we press search button. Now we have a search results observable where all our search results will go and get stored into and our component would say that I want to subscribe to the search results observable. So that means that my one, two, three and four components have subscribed to my search results observable. That means as soon as the data will be filled inside the search result observable, all the components will get the same data at the same point of time. Now, let's say if I press the search button and as soon as I get the search results, all my components would be filled with the consistent data and relevant data from a single source of data and I don't need to manually do all the juggling that I used to do with my previous traditional web application code. So over here as you can see that I get 10 search results result 1 through 10 and on my right hand side I can display that okay I've got 10 search results and the data is coming in from the search result observable and it comes at the same time as this main component of search result is getting the data. Over here at the bottom, we can also see that I get seven direct flights and three hopping flights. That also has been filtered out from the same source of data and it has been filtered out as soon as the data was available to me. Now, let's say I want to give you the example of max price filter. Let's say if I put the filter of 5000 rupees on my search results, that means that some of the search results would vanish. The other three components should also get updated. When this filter comes into action, the actual modification happens only on the search result observable, which in turn will affect all the subscriptions of the observable. That means this main component, this component, this component and this component. So let's see if I apply the price filter, the results get updated automatically. Now I have totally five results four direct and one hopping flight. So this is where observables come in handy. The components just need to have an headache of subscribing to that observable and it provides you a solution for handling all your functional, imperative and event based codes. So this is what the problem that observable solves for us. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more videos like this, please like, subscribe and share my channel Everyday JavaScript and for any other concepts that you want me to explain visually, please drop your comments in the comments section and thank you for watching.